do you find that meditation practices are a, a, a necessary piece in nourishing the soul? Should we all be practicing meditation to counterbalance perhaps the frenetic pace of life, technology, information that comes at us? You see, I've been practicing this since 1976. Mm. I have seen my colleagues meditating, friends meditating. Simple thing I shared with you, Casper, that when you and your spouse, your children, just think of a moment when you are sitting together and meditating together. Imagine the amount of energy it creates and harmony it creates. Right? Many families coming together, sitting peacefully around a tree, just closing your eyes and remaining in silence for a few moments. Imagine children in a classroom. Before they begin the class, they remain relaxed, peacefully, uh, drawn inside and waiting for class to begin. Right? Even if you don't believe in God, just closing your eyes and sitting silently and enjoying those lovely moments that you ever had in your life, recalling that again and again and cherishing it in your heart. I think that does so much of a healing also to our bodies. You become very peaceful and with the peaceful heart, peaceful mind and love oozing in your heart, I think even when you are dying, you will not feel that you are dying. You will wait for something grand to happen at that moment. You will become fearless because now you are moving into a different world, different dimension altogether with confidence. So not just the life impact, but one worries, you know, most people, even yogis, uh, so-called, uh, they remain either afraid or not afraid. And once you have this understanding that my life force, which is within me, it was there before, but it became incarnated within me, and it will move on later on also. So there is no end to this life force. So when the life force is not going to end, what am I worried about? Why should I be worried about? I found that a number of people that find themselves sick and unhappy, at, at their core, they could receive treatments, they could go after the physicality of everything, like you say, diet, movement, uh, all these different pieces, but at the core, they lack purpose. Even if they obtain health after being in a diseased state, Without purpose, they find themselves back in disease state. Is meditation a practice that connects one with purpose? Is, is that something it can, you know, you can one can obtain? Because people often ask, "How am I supposed to find my purpose?" <laughs> yes. In the beginning, <laughs> I've seen people do come to us for meditation with known uh, intentions that they would like to have peace of mind. Some people come to us because they are grieving because so-and-so whom they loved had passed on. Various people, uh, they come, somebody is terminal, terminally sick and they want some peace, some stress-free life, worry-free life. Everyone comes for their own personal reason. But here, as we meditate, we develop some wisdom and understanding that, okay, I did come for peace of mind. I did come for some joy in my heart. Now, having attained peace and having attained joy, what next? The goal keeps on receding and you become more and more uh, a craving, you begin to crave for higher and higher level of 
I would say joy, mm-hmm. higher level of peace, because you know this peace also. It's like a spectrum, high frequency peace, low frequency peace. Mm. You know, there is the joy also has the different frequencies. I, I I I think you know some I the joy that you get out of having an ice cream, mm. versus joy of having discussion with your beloved. Or joy that you have just sitting silently with your beloved. They have different spectrum, different uh, resonance, I would say. And when we talk of bliss that arise out of meditation at some level, it is uniformly same, I think. There is no spectrum to it because there is nothing to oppose it. There is no opposite of bliss. There is opposite of joy. There is opposite of happiness. There is opposite of peace. But there is no opposite of bliss when we experience that, you see. So people can come for anything. But here, your own experience will tell you, okay, I've experienced this now. What next? Then you experience that, or that descends automatically in your heart. And then you'll wonder, well, what next? Even when you are in a perfectly blissful state, you'll say, okay, what next? Hmm. You would want to transcend even the bliss. And that is the most beautiful thing because people, you can leave your sadness, you can get rid of your. Um, restlessness or your anxiety. But when it comes to bliss, who wants to get out of blissful state? And now you're talking pure spirituality. <laughs>